Yes. The recording has been started. <laughs> Welcome to the Haskell Ring, the series where we solve programming problems, but you know, in Haskell. All right, uh, the next issue, the next one is apple and orange. Wow. The description of this problem is extremely boring, so let me actually explain it myself. I want to use a simple and interesting trick. In this problem, we have three things. We have a house, that's a really strange house, but anyway, apple tree on the left side and orange tree on the right side. Apples and oranges can fall on both sides of the trees. We know how many oranges and apples fell and we know the exact distance they fell from the tree. We also know the size of the house and the positions of the trees. Having all of that information, we should answer how many apples and oranges oranges fell into the house. We are given S and T, which represent the beginning and the ending position of the house, A, which is the position of the apple tree, and B, which is the position of the orange tree, and we are given the set of distances of apples and oranges. So let's try to find out the format. The first line contains S and T, basically the size of the house. The second line contains A and B, basically positions of the trees. The third line contains the amount of apples and oranges that fell. The fourth line contains the distances of apples and the fifth line contains the distances of oranges. And the output of the program should consist of two lines. The first line contains the amount of apples that fall into the house and the second line contains the amount of oranges that fall into the house. So, from the mathematical perspective, the solution is just a function from one bag of numbers to another bag of numbers. The amount of output numbers is two, but it doesn't really matter in our case. So, I want to define a simple function called solve from one list of integers to another list of integers. We could have actually returned a pair of integers, but it will be easier to work with the list of integers in the end, and I'll show you why soon. So yeah, we should think of the input numbers as just a list of numbers. Solve function takes a bunch of numbers and should return a bunch of numbers. And we have an example from the problem description. What we have to do, we have to extract those numbers. For example, from the description, we know that the first line contains S and T, which are the size of the house. The second line A and B, which are the positions of the trees. The third line is amount of apples and oranges. The fourth line is apples. And the last line is oranges. And inside of solve function, we have to extract those values somehow. To do that, we are going to use pattern matching. Basically, pattern matching allows you to take some structure and bind some internal values of that structure to a variable. Let's take a look at the example. For example, we have a list of four numbers. And I want to take first number and the third number and assign them to two variables that I can use later. So what I do, I describe a pattern. For example, I want the first value to be assigned to A. I don't care about the second value. The third value is going to be B and I don't care about the fourth value. Boom. A, B contains the values that I want. You see, basically, we match the data structure with a particular pattern. That's why it's called pattern matching. But sometimes you don't really know how many values your list contains, but you still want to extract, for example, first element of the list. And for that, there is a special syntax. It looks like so. With this pattern, we don't really care how many values in the list. We can actually even add more values. The result is going to be the same. What's interesting about this pattern is that it extracts the first element and the tail of the list, basically the rest of the elements in the list. So, for example, if you do something like that, x is going to contain 1 and x is going to contain the rest of the elements. But you can actually extract more than one element that way. For example, you want to extract two first elements and here you go. You extracted first two elements and the rest of the list. Let's try to use this knowledge to extract the values of the input data for our problem. So we know that the first two elements are s and t, which are the size of the house. We know that the third and the fourth value are the position of the tree. And 
and we know that the six and sevens values are the amount of apples and oranges. So what's interesting, this is the only numbers we are certain about. What comes next actually depends on M and M. So basically we don't know for sure how many numbers after that. So we can actually denote the rest of the things as rest. And in our case, rest is going to be the list that concatenates the list of apples and the list of oranges. So what do we know about a rest list? First, M values of the rest contains apples and the rest of the values contain origins. In Haskell, there is interesting function called take. It takes a number and a list and returns another list. And what it does, it takes n numbers from the list. So you see, I provided the list from one to five and I took three numbers of them. So we can use that function to extract apples from the rest. Let's use where binding to bind apples and oranges. Basically, we know that apples are first m elements of the rest list. And what are the oranges? In Haskell, there's also kind of an opposite function for take. It's called drop. It has absolutely the same signature, but instead of taking the values, it drops them. You see, it actually dropped three values and returns the rest of the things. So to extract oranges from the list, we have to drop M values from the rest. That's it. And what's interesting, that actually implies that for that particular problem, we don't even need N. We don't really care about it. M is sufficient enough to separate apples from oranges. Once we have the distance Instances of the apples and oranges relative to the trees they fell from, we can actually calculate their absolute values. To calculate absolute values, we have to add A to the each distance of the apples and B to the each instance of the oranges. And it's pretty easy to do with the map. So we basically take the value and add A to it. The same goes for oranges. And this is, by the way, the syntax of a lambda expression, basically nameless function. Well, these days we have those functions in almost any modern programming languages, C++, Java, JavaScript, and stuff like that, Python, y you name it. Uh, all of the modern programming languages have that. And this is how it looks like in Haskell. So it starts with backslash, and then we have a list of arguments, then we have an arrow, and then we have an expression that basically calculates the values based on arguments. Once we have absolute positions of apples and oranges, we have to see which positions fall into the range that determines the house, basically which values are between S and T. To do that, we can use a function called filter. This function takes another function from some element to boolean, and this function usually called predicate, then it takes a list and returns another list based on the predicate. If the predicate for a particular element is true, that element is going to be in the final list. If it's false, it's going to be filtered out. For example, do we have even a function? Yeah, we do. Basically, it just checks whether a value is even or not. So what we can do, we can actually filter all of the even numbers from the list. And we're going to use that here to filter out all of the apples and oranges that are outside of the house, like that. Once we filter everything out, we have to calculate the size of the lists. And the sizes of those lists are going to be the answers for our problem. And now we can just return these two values as the result. Let's actually test this entire solution. We already have uh, an input that we can put into soft. Let's see how it's going to look like. It doesn't compile. <laughs> And this is because I forgot to specify the signature for, for the input. It has to be the list of integers. Okay, let's try it again. And the result is one and one. And let's take a look at the right result in the description. And uh, yeah, it's supposed to be one and one. But this is not enough. This is just a function from one list of numbers to another list of numbers. And we have to turn that into interactive program that we can then submit to the system. We're going to use our usual trick with interact function, which takes a function for string to string and produces some side effect. So we get this as an input. As usual, the first thing we have to do, we have to split that by words. Once we split that by words, we have to convert that into integers using read function. At this point, we already have the list of integers that we can pass through the solve function. And solve function returns a list of two numbers, which we have to convert back to strings. At this point, we have two strings, but we have to actually concatenate them separating with the new lines. For 
that, in Haskell we have a function called unlines. So yeah, this is the final solution, but we just have to remove that. We don't need that for, for a final solution. So this is the final solution. Let's try to submit that. Why is it color? Let's see if it compiles on their side. Okay, it compiles and let's submit that. Easy, GG.